Hey guys, Azazaya here, and today I will be going over the Mgram 5 color basic watercolor set. I will be doing color swatching and color mixes with this, and a brief review of my opinion about the paints. So the paints come in this little box and you get five paints. It's very simple but it's clean and I like it. I just keep the box because I like the way it stores. But you can see the different colors that they have here. We'll go over those in a minute. Feel free to pause to read. Alright, so typically this box comes like this and this whole bottom part is sh shrink wrapped but I tore this off obvi obviously because I've been using it and here you can see the colors that they have which is azo yellow and it's not focusing there we go Feel free to pause to read. And then ultramarine blue. I need to do the thing with the hand in the way or to help focus, I guess. <laughs> it's permanent alizarin crimson. Burnt Sienna and Sap Green. Oops. As you can see, these are artist grade watercolors, and these are 15 milliliter tubes. Yeah. Hey guys, so we're going to start the demo now, and right here is actually the M-Gram basic set watercolor. I'm using the Stillman and Burn Alpha Series sketchbook and the Grace Art 4 round brush. So I've used this um, set before, and I actually like it a lot. It's a lot earthier than um, the Sennelier set, I think but I love how juicy that the colors get. This is Azo Yellow. And it doesn't take a lot of water to get it reactivated after it's been dried. These are great in being able to reactivate. I like it a lot. But it does um, stay moist if you're in a more humid climate so I wouldn't recommend it if you do live in a tropical climate with a lot of humidity like even where I live which is temperate it, we have a decent amount of humidity but in the, only in the summer but like I don't know if you can see this uh, turquoise, this is the southwest set, which I'll do in another video. That little chunk here fell right over here, so I have to be careful not to use that when I swatch. But, uh, yeah, so I just... Usually that doesn't happen for me, but it happened recently. But I just left it there. I could move it, but I didn't want to. Oops, I didn't talk about the other yellow. So it's PY153. Light fast rating of one, transparent, and I think S is staining. <laughs> I copied it from the website, but I did it last week. <laughs> I'm recording this a week later after I recorded the initial videos because I just didn't have time. Um, so yeah, something happened personally at home, so I didn't um, have the energy or time to record it. 
but this is a nice trio, I think. Um, permanent alizarin, alizarin crimson. Ha. Huh. Um, it's PR two sixty four transparent staining and light facet two. So it's not as high a rating, but it's still a decent rating. And you have to be sure to get the permanent kind when you're getting this color because there is a version where it is not light fast. So the colors will shift like after a certain amount of time in the sun or if you choose to display it, it will affect the color as it ages, which some artists may care about, some may not. If you have it in a sketchbook, it's probably be it'll probably be fine. But um, yeah, I mean, I think two is still pretty good though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. And then ultramarine blue, it's a PB29, uh, transparent, granulating, and light fast of one. Sorry, that's much. It's a one. <laughs> and I love how juicy these emigram colors are. Oh, I forgot to tell you, um, uh, ignore that, that's white out. I'm, I typed, or not typed, haha, <laughs> I wrote that out wrong. Um, what was I saying? Uh, the hunt, uh, they have honey in this watercolor paint, so it's not vegan either. Vegan friendly, rather. So, yeah, the Sennelier and the M. Graham have honey, but it doesn't bother me. Um, in terms of using art materials. I do try to be more s sustainable in terms of what products I buy, but it's just something to take into consideration if it does mean a lot to you. And then here's Sap Green. So it's PG7, PY110, and then Life Fast is 1, transparent and staining. So actually, maybe because I'm not as much of a, let's do this weird shape again, of a landscape portrait, or sorry, landscape artist, I don't use this color that much. So I haven't seen the, like, I know Denise from the In Liquid, what, In Liquid Color, I really admire her, so definitely check her out if you are watching here. Uh, I really like, she really likes using sap green. Not necessarily this version of sap green, but um, Daniel Smith's um, original formula. It was a single pigment, but they've since um, created a new sap green with multiple pigments to recreate that original sap green because they ran out of that original pigment. But yeah, I was curious about it. So I was kind of excited when I got the color, but I mean, it's a nice color. I just, I guess maybe because I don't do a lot of uh, animal portraits or landscape, uh, maybe I just haven't found the secret to why this color is amazing. <laughs> and the same with browns. I mean, I like some browns though. So I do like burnt sienna. So burnt sienna, PBR7, light fast one. Semi-transparent and granulating. I, I do like my burnt siennas though. You definitely love these colors. I really hope you can't hear my fan. Um, sorry if you can. It's really pretty humid today. So I will be dying if I don't have it on. <laughs> so, yep. So I think this is a good um, starter set. It's, like I said, a lot more earthier. So you don't have as many modifying colors. So if you get this set, I would probably recommend maybe picking up one or two more other colors to go along with this to help make it more robust. But um, I'm not going to recommend what colors yet because I'm not that experienced 
but I still like this set quite a bit for the price you pay. And it's artist quality watercolor, so highly recommend it. Alright, let's start doing this color mixing. Yeah, these colors are like super pigmented. I think that's something I uh, forgot to mention. When I first started using these colors, I was I picked up too much pigment. Versus in the Sennelier, I accidentally picked up too little pigment. So you'll get really far with these colors if you pick these up. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. They're super vibrant. They mix really well. Can get a little bit more yellow on that. Maybe too much red. Sorry guys, my video cut off. I really need to remember to check it every once in a while while I'm doing this. Usually I'm better about that, but I'm a little rusty I guess. Um, so what you missed here was that I um, mixed the red and yellow and then I, since I had a lot of pigment still on my brush, I decided to do the mix over here. So this is with a little bit of red and yellow and this is adding more red to it. And then let's do blue. I don't know, I, there's something about ultramarine blue that is so versatile. I know lots of artists have this color on their on their palettes, rightfully so, because it's a beautiful color. I am not as familiar with using other blues yet. Um, See, this makes a wonderful green here. It's a little bit different than um, the sap green. More jewel, jewel tone, in my opinion. <laughs> and then hopefully this red didn't dry yet. And this makes a pretty shadowy, moody purple, which is good for shadows. So you won't get like super vibrant, some. Um, purples here either if that's what you're looking for but it's a good standard color mixes I like them a lot all right so let's do some more color mixes do yellow oops did I grab yeah so we can do like a light green here Too much green. I mean blue. See what I mean about um, the colors being really heavily pigmented, which is great. I actually like it a lot. I just um, it's a little bit of a learning curve to get the right one, right color that you like. I love this. I love that. That's really pretty. The green, yellow to green, blue mix. Alright, let's do red and nice neutralized kind of blue purple let's see if I do a little more red
it's nice. Uh, you get a pretty good range there. Let's do sap green with a little bit of yellow. It'll probably be more yellowy, but it'll still be fun to see. Yeah, I could see that being a nice leafy green. It's interesting that they chose um, two different yellows for that, but they seem to mix pretty well, so no complaints here. Yep, so this is pretty much full set green almost here. Yeah, these would be good um, colors for foliage or any sort of plants you might have. And then let's do burnt sienna. I know the typical burnt sienna and ultramarine blue makes nice gray. I think, was it Jane's gray? I think is Jane Blandell is the person who figured out or at least popularized this color mix. Sorry, I had to check my camera make sure it didn't. Uh, let's put it up here. Uh, dye on me. So it makes a nice, cool gray. You can tint it out to... Oh, this isn't cool. That's more real form, but you can make it cooler. If you want it. Or you can make it a little bit warmer towards burnt sienna, but this is a color that a lot of artists use for pavement or shadows, and it's a lovely mixture color. And then I believe it's Steve Mitchell from Mind of Watercolor. He came out with a video, I'll try to link it below, with other colors you could use to make grays, which I found super fascinating, and I love that because I actually had some of those colors, and uh, I haven't played around enough with them to realize that they actually made grays, so he provides the shortcut for us, so learn from, well, I've been learning a lot from these other great watercolor YouTubers, so I've been appreciating those kind of content, so that's what I'm kind of hoping that this helps with a little bit for you guys to see what colors make what and just kind of learn along with me. Hopefully this is kind of valuable for you. If not, it's still valuable to me. <laughs> I hope it's valuable to you though. Okay, so I think let's do sap green and burnt sienna. Versus, like, in comparison to the Sennelier colors, or Sennelier set, Uh, this set doesn't really give you as many modifying colors. They don't... That's not true. Ah, I just realized, so you could make a black, or at least a gray, and make that modifying color. Okay, so we'll, we'll try that next. Versus, uh, they gave you like a Payne's gray in the Sennelier. So this is kind of a brown... Brown green. Let's see how that looks. Doesn't look so good on the palette. That's yeah, okay. I think I might like more green. Yeah, that looks better. Just playing around. Um, let's see how that looks more brown. Yeah, I could see this being kind of like a mossy... Sorry. I'm trying to see if I can make like a black right here. With the trio color here. Let's 
looks like it's turning more brown. I thought I could make a black. But I could be wrong. I think I tried that before. Hmm, let's see. Is it getting better? Kind of. It looks muddy though. <laughs> but I'm just playing around. It's a decent dark color. Kind of looks a little bit more green though. So, this is probably why I don't use that. Oh, I think it's too much red. Ah. <clears throat> this is probably why I don't mix paint gray or try to make. I just use a convenience color because it's easier. <laughs> okay, that looks better. That looks like a more dark gray black potentially if I use a lot more pigment. Okay, that that's better. So yeah, so let's try to use this and try to sort of modify colors. Yeah. Okay, let's use what we have here. So we have a purple, we have a purple here, so let's see how dark a purple we can make. Hmm, looks like it just shifted the colors. Since it's red, I shifted it more red. So you can get like a neutralized red, blue, yellow, probably. You gotta be careful because it does. Um, so I'm not as familiar with how muddy colors look. But to me, this kind of looks muddy. So. Hmm, sorry for the lighting here. Sun's coming out. to check that timer. It records every eight minutes, so like about eight minutes it stops recording and it doesn't let me know, so sorry if I'm pausing and doing weird things to in between. Okay, so let's try the blue. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be like a just a darker blue. I'm using more water, it's not as dark, which is fine. It's good to know. Alright, let's do like yellow. Yep. So you sort of can get some modifying colors, but you have to be a little bit more careful versus using like a Payne's gray or neutral tint and the colors you use. Alright. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what colors I hadn't used together yet. <laughs> Let's do burnt sienna. And Red. So this is making more like an orangey red. Let's go over here. I like it. It's uh, very similar to a color that I saw in my mix. Kind of like a brick orangey red. I should probably try to do skin tones. I feel like I would like to do more portraits, so definitely want to set that makes good uh, skin colors. This might be a good one. So here's yellow and burnt sienna. Okay, not bad. Let's see if I use a little bit more burnt sienna. So 
so you can see the difference here between, of course I've used different pigment amounts, so this may not be as vibrant as that. The burnt sienna for skin tone, sorry. <laughs> I like this one. This was a good skin tone. As a Asian American person, I've never shown my face so you don't know what I look like, but Asian American, <laughs> Chinese American I guess more specifically, seeing variation of skin tones, especially with Black Lives Matter and people of color, I want to try to be able to capture their skin tones, our skin tones, and um, my paintings better, so definitely I'm looking for variations in the colors. <sighs> that light, that bothers me. Sorry guys, hope that doesn't bother you as much. I can't shift my setup. And I don't have a lighting system, so. <laughs> Gotta work with what you got. Alright, so... How about, oh, skin tone colors, right. I was going to do sap green and red. Uh, let's do sap green and red really quick before I forget. Uh, let me add a color spot mixes. Oh yeah, red and green kind of neutralize. Forget about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got a different kind of green here a little bit. Again, I don't really paint enough landscapes to do these variations of green or be able to use them, but it's not bad. I mean, look at these different greens you can make. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Alright. Okay, while I'm at it, since I already did yellow, let's do set green and blue. I haven't forgotten to do the skin tones yet. No, wrong color. I think this makes a really nice color. I like. I lean more towards like greens, purples, and blues. So yeah, that makes a nice. Yeah, purple. Nice colors. This is a color I really like. I like those deep jewel colors. So hee <laughs> hee. It's really nice. See all these variances. Highly recommend it. Okay, let's do skin colors. Okay, let's do skin colors. Sorry, I had to start that video up again. Alright, um. So we already did. Well, I didn't do a super clean yellow. So let's do yellow and red. So what if I mix a little uh, burnt sienna in there? Look a little darker, more brown. Okay, let's see if I mix this black I made. How's that look? Is it? I'm looking for like an umber color. Okay, I think I'm getting it here. For the darker complexions. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, this makes a pretty good set for skin tones, too. 
can adjust so we get like a golden color here, a little bit more um, cream, peach, red, brown colors. Okay. Let's see if I add a little bit more blue here. Maybe. Probably too much, too much blue. But yeah, I think I like the set overall. It's a good basic set too. In addition to it being excellent and affordable um, artist grade watercolor set, I recommend it. Um, yeah, here you get a nice blue black kind of. I would have to mix more colors to make that dark, but I think you can make that nearly black depending on how much pigment you use. Hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's a good, robust color mixes. Uh-oh, I'm running out of, excuse me, camera memory storage. But I think, I think that's all the colors I need to do. We did red, yellow, red, blue, we did green, then we did sap green, and then we did the Brent and Sienna. Yeah, I think we did pretty much all the color mixes that I can see. I don't have the greatest memory, sorry guys if I miss the color mix. But I think we got it all. We made the grays kind of brown. Yeah, we could could do brown. So in that case, well, I mean, we have burnt sienna, but if you wanted to do a brown with these, you could probably tint it more red here. Let's try that, I guess. Oops, too much red. But let's see. Red and yellow probably make it more... Brown here. Any more blue? Yeah, that's a little bit more. I'm gonna make a little bit more brown. So, yep, yep. You make a nice brown here instead of. If you do more blue, you probably get more gray there. So yeah, not bad. Good set to use for beginners. Definitely test your colors to make sure that you're getting what you want. Hopefully this helps. It's, I don't do the, I don't do the grid. I think I explained in my other video, but in case you didn't see that, I can't. I mean, I could do the grid. It just for me the color mixes. Uh, doesn't quite retain in my memory. Like here, uh, I probably won't look at it too much for the color mixes. In terms of recreating it, uh, I prob I'm more of an intuitive painter, so I'll just mix colors and sell it. I get what I want. <laughs> so uh, that's probably not the best, but this is just how I paint. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be the best method, but it's a method that kind of works for me. <laughs> so, take what you can that helps you with your painting and how you learn. I mean, everybody learns differently, so. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I mean, let me know if I missed any colors. Sorry if I did. Um, I'm curious, have you guys used this set? Do you like it? What are your thoughts? Be sure to leave comments below and give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you like this content. It lets me know that uh, this is more of what you'd like to see and I can try to accommodate for that. Alright, um, I think that's all. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.